Hello everyone, welcome back to Razor Space Part Development and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. In this video I introduce a new Trans Mars Habitat for my To Mars and Beyond series that I'm going to be using on my large Mars ships. And the, this is just for going to and from Mars, not landing on it necessarily, though I can imagine adapting it for that. But it is fairly large, it is 8.4 meters in diameter, and that means that it is the same diameter as SLS, it is the same diameter as my Kasei rocket, and it is also capable of fitting inside Starship, which is actually what I'm going to be showing in this video. Uh, it would normally have a nose cone, so we don't need a fairing with it, that's one of its plus sides. Uh, but it also has many other plus sides. First of all, this top part is an airlock, so actually it's just like that, and so it's just a little airlock part. And then we have the top part, which is a cockpit part, and then this is the habitat area that is separate from the copper part, it's oriented differently. And we have uh, room for basically two floors. Uh, it, it would actually be, this area would be one floor and then down below here would be another floor. And it depends on whether we're having the whole ship spinning to create artificial gravity, which way everything is oriented. Either way, it could be oriented with this side being the bottom where people stand and this side being connected to the rest of the ship, if it's spinning around, that would be the right way around. Um, or we could have it the other way around and them standing on uh, that surface, but uh, that's... I mean, we'll obviously have this part closed up, but because that's to the airlock. But anyway, uh, we have the supplies clearly delineated, and so we have the little care packages with the food, and then we have water tanks and oxygen tanks and all that. And the thing is, with this uh, cockpit, you might have already noticed that we have some motors on it. Uh, it is meant to be an abortable cabin. Uh, so it can decouple from the rest of this and be recoverable. Now, of course, it need parachutes as well. So that is one of the features. And we are going to test that. <laughs> so... And again, so this the, the beautiful thing about this is that it can launch on many things, including hopefully also the Orion carrier plane. So it'll have the the well, whatever transfer stage that we have in the back of it, and then it'll be in the front, and we won't need a separate fairing for it. We'll just have a nose cone to cover the top, and then it can launch to orbit and then attach to whatever vessel it's going on to. So that's the idea of it. Let's see it on Starship. So this is once again Pekka's Starship, and in this case we have a hatchless Pekka's Starship, and that is so that this can go in and still have the escape pod work, right? If you have the hatch on, the escape pod doesn't work, it'll hit the hatch. Um, it is 8.4 meters in diameter, so therefore it doesn't quite, you know, match Starship. It's a little bit recessed in, but it's not too bad. Uh, it's still a pretty snug fit, as you can see. And actually, it could even be made lighter because Starship is is sort of bearing the structural brunt of everything, right? Uh, There's not a load-bearing part anymore. It's not encountering aerodynamic forces. Uh, Starship is doing all that work. So, yeah, it would probably be... But then again, it has to be hardened for space exploration anyway, so it's not, not really going to be that light in the first place. Back here we have some extra sections. These are habitat, extra habitat levels. They're like this. And basically they have crew quarters. We have a treadmill and some computers right now. Those were borrowed from NASA's uh, model of the ISS actually. So, yep. Uh, so we have all that. The question is whether the abort system is going to work. We do have parachutes on it here and here. Those are just real shoot parachutes. And let's launch it and see if the board system works. That's what this video is about. I'm just introducing the parts and then, you know, in the Two Mars and Beyond series we'll see them at work, but I'm going to test the abort system. The abort engines are RS-88s. They are the abort engines of CST-100. You might wonder why I wouldn't use Super Dracos and I just wanted to mix things up. Also, I had already modeled the CST-100 uh, Starliner board engines because I have a CST-100 model. I wanted to be at Starbase. Hold on. 
I mean, I had it selected as Starbase, but Kerbal Constructs is tricky like that. Okay, there's Starbase. Pekka has worked on Starbase a little bit, but um, it's still a work in progress, so don't mind it. Uh, I'll just run the Starship launch script and see how it goes. Um, I was thinking of doing a pad abort, but first of all, our current orientation would have the ejection module hit the tower. <laughs> and uh, second of all, uh, I don't think the parachutes would deploy quickly enough. They take too long to deploy. So we do need some height. I don't think we can eject out on the ground. Now, having KOS run the script instead of me manually launching, I don't know how this is all going to work. We'll find out. Okay, we don't want that on. All right, let's see. Well, we're off. I don't have any engine loss as an excuse for aborting, unfortunately. No worry, the SAS thing will turn off soon. Um, how high do I want to be? <laughs> uh, let's say a thousand meters just for a round number. Okay, abort. Uh, is it stuck? Oh, uh, do I have to throw? Oh, I had to throttle up. Oop, okay, that's good enough. That's a quirk of having KOS, otherwise I w it, would, it was already throttled up, sort of, but... Also, with Realism Overhaul, the liquid engines, as opposed to the solids, have an engine response time. They take some time to spool up, and I can't get that exactly to zero. So, that's a downside. As you can see, it's 10 tons right now. Some of that's the propellant for the escape system. We could probably reduce that, but I mean, it's a reasonably heavy module. It's not, it's not crazy light. It's not crazy heavy either. Right now, there are four kerbals inside. I'm just using my standard EDB cabin. It looks like this. You can still see out the front, but there's sort of a doubling of things that we don't need, and I could just make a more dedicated cabin for it. But we've got the raster prop monitor stuff here too. So it's all like that. I don't know. This 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 sort of works, but I don't know how it works. <laughs> uh, anyway. So yes, they're there. Uh, seating for four right now, but I'll check the seating arrangement and see how many we can actually fit. And there we are. So that is the currently the Habitat 3 system. Habitat 2 was the Yaruki, which I decided I didn't really like the look of that much. It had the pod bay doors with the little pod that could come outside, but the pod kept hitting things and it was really hard to use. And then Habitat 1 is actually the habitat that I've been using in my Two Mars and Beyond series. It's the big marshmallow shaped habitat and it's just uh, straight up. 8.4 me it's basically like the hydrogen tank of SLS's EUS turned into a habitat more or less it's about the same size well we're gonna land in the water it looks like but gently and right off the shore too and so we've got sort of a cliff here but anyway Abort successful. We actually have too much of the abort propellant here. Um, buoyancy in Kerbal Space Program, though. I don't know if it's going to stop bouncing. Anyway, we'll re revert. We'll revert. I was thinking of recovering it, but it's fine. You get the picture. This is not the first time that I've made an abort pod for Starship, but this is a much more refined version compared to the last one. Though the last one could carry 24 Kerbals inside. I actually placed them. They were packed in pretty well. Uh, I'll see how, my, how many I can fit in here. Uh, just want to test it one more time. This time without the KOS script. And see whether it automatically has the throttle up or not.
Okay, so this time I'll just do it with Smart ASS, throttle up SAS on, ignition, and launch. It seemed that we had some room to work with as far as... Oh, I should have retracted the arms. I mean, the QD arm is probably causing the tower to rock back and forth like that. Yeah, I, I, uh, we probably could do it lower than 1,000 meters and still have the parachutes work. Uh, so let's say I abort now. Yeah, now now I don't have to manually throttle up. It was just because KOS was in control. It left me in a thrall down state initially. Yeah, not too bad. But I still don't think we could abort on the ground. Well, especially with the tower in the way. So, okay, as this capsule floats back down, and maybe we'll hit land this time so we don't have to wait for the bobbing to stop, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.